Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to your end of November 2020 general tarot update. It's Raina here. And as a fellow Sagittarian, I am looking forward to the entrance of the sun in Sag on the 21st. So that is the solar return period. Of course, your birthday is your real solar return. And um, so some of the astrological transits that will be occurring in this time frame are, one of them is um, the new moon in Scorpio at 23 degrees of Scorpio on, well, it depends on where you live. Um, I, I just found out that actually where I live, it's going to be on the 14th of November and, um, you know, right before midnight, for some of you, it will be on the 15th. And um, for Sanj, this is the 12th house. So this is a place of quiet, kind of like um, reflection, dream time, the psychic realm or realms. And is kind of that uh, womb of creation so that when you are ready for your uh, solar return, whether it's in November or December, you will come out of the gate kind of um, ready to go, ready to rumble with the new year. So um, the other thing that is happening is that Mars is turning direct on the 13th. I'm actually recording this on 11-11, so that's very auspicious as well. But uh, Mars turning direct in Aries. And so this has been something that is has been, we've been... Uh, dealing with since uh, September. And this has been a fellow fire sign and in the fifth house for Sagittarius, whether it's your solar chart or whether you are uh, Sag rising. Of course, this is general and it does depend, you know, the timing issues depend on the exactitude of the degree of sun or rising. But just in general, in the fifth house, we're talking about creative matters. Um, some of you may, who are creative may have had an artistic block that should start pushing forward or some kind of frustration involving um, your, uh, like somebody that you've been dating, um, uh, children, that's another fifth house matter, the business that you own. So anything along those lines you should start to feel like you're not just uh, spinning your wheels and you're, that your hands are tied and you can't do anything. Because Mars, especially when it's in Aries, in its own sign, wants to do something, wants to see that progress. So the other thing that I want to tell you about is that on the 30th, there's going to be a lunar eclipse in Gemini. And that's the opposite sign to Sag, obviously. Well, some of you may not know that. And so... Just in general, not for everybody, but just in general, this can affect relationship matters. Um, lunar eclipses are powerful full moons. In any full moon, you're having an opposition with the sun, so there could be relationship issues in general. But in this case in particular, because it's affecting that particular house for um, at least some Sagittarians, there could be kind of a... Um, what we would say is like a crisis point, or in some cases, even if you have been living with somebody, but always wanted to get married, I, I don't know how many Sages would fall into that category, but there might be a few out there, or um, just some issue around commitment. This could be like when it gets tipped over in that direction, where you the, the other party decides that they want to do it or that you want to do it. Maybe you're the holdout. And so you kind of, um, I would say with the lunar eclipse, you kind of surrender to this idea of commitment and it doesn't become something you're fighting against. So, so anyway, let's look at what the cards say about this. It's funny, I divided them into five piles because I've been seeing five, five, five. I, first I was seeing 11, 11, perfect, 
talking about it today. And I was seeing 444 and 222, and now I'm seeing a lot of fives. And even 555, which was kind of unusual. Oh my goodness gracious. Talk about drama here. But that's what the, the um, eclipse, if it's, you know, we're in the cycle of Sag and Gemini, this kind of um, stuff going on. And um, I actually see, oh, there's the Hermit, and that's kind of that 12th house. So we have um, even a couple of major arcana cards, so that could be very, um, that this is a period of, of um, you know, things happening. So interesting, you know, now when I, when I see this, I kind of think of what is going on. This is the Nine of Swords. This is a card of anxiety. And I don't know about you, but that has been something that I have been dealing with myself. And I think that for Sagis, if, if you've been dealing with anxiety, it can be kind of a bummer because some people, they, they're they more um, realistic about that side of life. I think Sagis tend to be Pollyannas and we want everything to be sparkly unicorns and so when we have these you know more intense feelings it can be a little bit daunting now astrologically with the um the, the sun in the 12th house and there may be you know mercury is probably at that point going back into the 12th too back into scorpio there can be these vague kind of because it's like the house of um karma repressed memories or past life memories which are you could say they're kind of repressed in a certain sense or suppressed um where something doesn't feel quite right to you but you can't pinpoint it and that kind of is difficult because you don't know what to do about it if you don't know what the cause is sometimes this is situational where and and that was kind of like what was coming up for me a situational bout of anxiety you know based on something that was actually happening. Um, and, you know, this too shall pass because once you solve that problem to one degree or another, you're, you know, you can move on from it. So it's not like it just has to grip you like this. But with the Nine of Swords, it can even be insomnia for some people where they are just, um, they can't stop thinking, you know, their thoughts are racing. Um, swords relate to thoughts. And perhaps there's even, in, for some of you, personal relationships that are bringing this on. If that is true, that is definitely a call to action on your part. And by action, I don't mean that you just walk out from that marriage or other relationship, but that you really uh, look at it very um, honestly and you know, start to, to say, what am I, what am I going to do about this? Because if you've been waiting for somebody else to change, that may not have yielded you the results that you wanted. And you're still dealing with these problems and maybe they're downright nasty to you. Maybe they're uh, playing mind games with, with swords. We can be dealing with the communication that is not as it should be. Um, in the past position we have the king of wands and this could even be like a boss um who is you know kind of or a father that's another thing now this is in the upright position so i don't want to demonize this person and say oh this is a bad person um i the first thing to be honest with you when i got this card was that this was you but in the past like you had you had more of a sense of your own autonomy an authority and somehow somebody was allowed to get into your head and um another um possibility <laughs> sorry about the uh i'm not you know i could pause this but i don't want to hopefully it won't be too loud but those are trains blowing their horns um another possibility is somebody who is um you know, if you were in a position where you were doing, you know, you had more freedom, you had more a sense of like your own direction that you're going in. And now you feel like you, your life is not your own. I, I, I see the King of Wands as the highest 
a symbol in the wands of um of um freedom which is you know wands are, are connected to fire signs so it's like that freedom that sages tend to crave and if something has kind of clipped your wings uh, or someone has clipped your wings. And I would say definitely with what has been happening in 2020, um, that we have felt our wings get clipped. And uh, for those of us who have to deal with shutdowns, some of you may be lucky that you can do anything practically. But some of us have been um, kind of back and forth where we had a little bit more freedom and then we didn't. And that can be uh, crazy making when that happens. So these kinds of little things that, that occur um, can be quite um, of a mind game of their own. So something along those lines that are causing you to feel that sense of oppression or um, angst and also, that's why I was saying, too, like the father figure. But if this was a father, especially, that was very kind of like your whole life or it was kind of larger than life figure. And you sometimes, even if you had a good relationship with such a person, especially if you're younger, although I don't know if it's necessarily age relevant, but um, sometimes we can have this great image of that parent that in this case, that father, and we can think that they were everything. We really worship them. And then we realize how much control they had over our lives. And that can happen when you diverge your interests or your path from what maybe they wanted. And you were kind of on that path for a long time. And then you went in a different direction and they uh, might have disapproved of, of you. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, I, I get it. So that's what, that's what's going on now. I'm, so it really is conditional love or conditional acceptance. And then it, it causes that anxiety because you realize that everything, it feels like everything was a lie. So, um, and I also think that King of Wands, if this is a boss, somebody that has some control over you to some degree, and you feel like you don't have that power, um, or a partner. Um, again, this person is not in the challenge position. So uh, if they are fire sign, they could be either a fellow Sag or an Aries or Leo. And it's possible that it's just two people with very strong wills or egos because fire signs, even though uh, we form a trine to Leo and Aries, I've said this before, I've asked Sages, do you get along with Aries and Leo? I'm not like really the type of person that has ever just famous gotten along famously with these signs overall because I think that there is that clash where you know maybe you feel that they're too bossy or what have you and um the higher message is the tower so we have this I I think of this not as calamity but release so that sense of like being able to be free from something that is kind of um, keeping you back. So if you have been anxious, and I think this is one of the big things, is this anxiety of like, let's say your job is on the line um, where you work. And um, especially towards the end of the year, this can be something that is a real possibility because of, you know, this is when... Uh, they tend to do these things because they're, you know, for their books of next year, clearing the books or what have you. And, you know, the thing is, is that you shall be released. So it's all good. Like if you were to lose your job, uh, if this is something that you have been sitting up late at night um, and you're afraid of that, you could think of this thing it's a trick that you do that you say why is this happening for me not to me and what it does is it sh it flips the script into from victimhood into feeling like this is for your highest good now i'm not spiritually bypassing the 
you know, reality of what it means if somebody loses their job. Um, actually with that full moon for, for, um, many of you, this may affect your work sector, but even these shakeups that happen, they put you on a path for better things, whether you understand it in that moment or not. And this is coming from experience that I've had of my own and not even, you know, losing my job, but actually quitting of feeling like I was being forced to quit, like I was quitting under duress. And for years, really feeling like this was an injustice, that I shouldn't have been put in that position. And I look back now, and I think I have a totally different viewpoint on it. Now, it did take a long time for me to see it. It doesn't have to take you that long. And it's not to say that you are going to lose your job. I mean, the thing is with the Nine of Swords and with worrying in general is that it can be, you know, it's not only fruitless, but a lot of times what you worry about never comes to pass. But the thing is, is that regardless of whether it's true or not, your anxiety is keeping you in a state of constriction where you can't, you know, which is the opposite of expansion really what fire energy is all about. And you can feel it physically in the body. You can feel that sense of um, like being, uh, you know, kind of like what they have here with this, the hands being bound, you know, that feeling of like, I can't break loose. And I think that when, uh, you know, Mars going direct, I think that's going to help remedy that as we move forward, that we will start to be able to act with a sense of, um, more authority and feeling like the universe is cooperating instead of, you know, feeling that like we're spinning our wheels. And I did videos, I think I did them for all the signs about the green light portal that is the astrological time uh, between mid-November and the end of January of 2020 when all the personal planets are direct. And I did a tarot reading for that for that um, particular um, situation. And so I'm almost positive I did one for SAD. So you can also check that one out if you're interested in an overview of that period and what that might represent for you. And um, so what we have is um, what crosses you, and this is the Four of Pentacles. This is a card of, you can see the person kind of hugging the gold coins, because this is a card of that sense of um, money management, sound money management. Well, this may be either an excessive concern about finances or that you have to, um, you know, be mindful of your finances and not be wasteful. You know, Sag is ruled by Jupiter and there's a tendency with Jupiter to overdo and um, you know, you might be thinking like, Hey, I want to, to do this and that, but being conscious of, uh, what your financial situation is. And especially since, uh, Saturn has gone back in that, uh, second house of earned income in the last several months. So there, there may be some of you who have felt a pinch uh, financially, you felt like you haven't been able to really manifest the way that you have before. Saturn goes into Aquarius, a much more friendly angle for Sag. I mean, a, a friendly sign for Sag and an angle on, um, in, you know, December, like 18th or so. And so that should be a time when things start to feel like they're not as heavy with finances and such, and that you feel like you can, um, have greater earning power and perhaps, um, just a sense of your own ability to, um, you know, not feel this sense of restriction in general. And, uh, so being mindful of that, but by the same token, not being too, caught up in that. If you have the moon in an earth sign or maybe in, especially in cancer 
which is very, can tend to be very worry, a worry wart, or, you know, where you're retaining things. Um, even, yeah, they, I think Scorpio, Moon and Scorpio, anal retentive and, and wanting to, you know, using the physical to try to keep your emotions in check. That can work against you as well. There has to be a balance because, we, you know, law of attraction, some people are hoarders. I mean, they may even have like more money than they know what to do with, but they are very fear-based around money and they try to spend as, um, the least possible. And those types of people, um, they're not engaging with money in a healthy way either. So it's really a dance between, um, learning to pry your fingers away from it, be, not being overly materialistic and fear-based about money, but also not being, um, negligent, wasteful, and really disrespecting money, you know, somewhere in between that. What's coming in is represented by the Ten of Wands, the burdens of success, according to a book that I own on the tarot. And this may indicate that you're working a lot um, harder on your career. Now, this is right before, or you could say it's the launch of the Christmas season or the holiday season in general. And so that might just be uh, situational with whatever your particular uh, job is where you have to work overtime at this time. Um, but, um, I feel like if there, if some of you, even if this is kind of a part-time gig where you have your own business and you have felt stymied by that in the last several months with Mars going retrograde there, that you may be all systems go and burning the candle at both ends, trying to, if you have a day job as well, trying to get that, or even if this is the only thing that you have, you may, perhaps you will start to have, uh, things pick up, but you may feel this sense of like, wow, I don't know if I can, um, keep up with it, you know, but that can be a good omen that things are starting to improve for you and that that will show up financially as well. Um, as we get, into this, um, season. And I would even look to, um, the winter solstice or summer solstice, depending on where you live as a kind of symbolic, or you could even say energetic, um, proof of this, because that is the nadir, the, the, the kind of like when the sun is at its lowest and it's starting to rise, the rebirth, and this is happening in the area of money when the sun goes into Capricorn into that second house and at the very same time you have Jupiter and Saturn in conjunction in the third house which is the house of the mind so that positive thinking that is also leading to um, an increase and in improvement in your finances so Maybe in December you will see proof of this around Christmas time. And then we have the outcome, the hermit. And now you see, <laughs> I have like, I don't know if this is, uh, it might be peeling. I've had these cards for a year, so um, they're starting, you know, this one, I need to color it in, I guess, with a little pen. Uh, but even the edges look a little bit like they, they're starting to peel off there. Uh, so the hermit, that is that um, connection with the 12th house, looking within, um, kind of contemplating. And also, like I, I, I would say too, and I actually think that this new moon in the 12th house can be a great time for setting intentions as well, or coming up with the things that you want. And from that creative uh, side of yourself, but all the spirit, because the first house is the house of the self and the body. And so we're looking at how are we going to embody these things that we want and manifest them in a tangible way. So everything comes from the top down, from the spiritual to the material. Um, you know, 
know, the ideas are coming from a higher realm, or we could just say from the intangible to the tangible. And so, um, also just your life in general, where do you want to be? We're going to have a solar eclipse in Sag in December. So that can be such a great boost to your, uh, next year, 2021. And, um, and the things you want to manifest in the next 12 months. Okay, that's what I have for you, Sag. And uh, thank you for watching. If you want to look at 2021 and what the uh, themes astrologically show up and um, what talents you have, your natal chart can be a treasure trove of that. And sometimes the world doesn't um, support that in an overt way. And it can be very healing to look, to, to, to see what your natal chart holds, to see what you came here to manifest, um, the talents you came here to share so you can help other people too, not just for your own self and, and aggrandizement, but for, um, um, other reasons for kind of helping humanity. So, um, I have, uh, different types of, uh, readings, uh, astrological readings, as well as, you know, tarot reading. Um, uh, the link below will show you more information. Take care. Bye.